Hi, Taurus. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are doing really, really well. This reading is for any sun, moon, or rising Taurus sign. The queen and king. We have the ultimate in pragmatic thinking, in common sense, in enjoying the pleasures of your life and the comfort of your life and beautifying your surroundings. Both the king and the queen are successful. They um, work hard, they're smart, they're able to multitask. And the king is a, um, a successful person when it comes to resources, investments, money, property, uh, time management, and so he's very capable. So here's this very capable energy for you, which is really doing it all. And so with this king and queen of pentacles, we're talking about... So when I see a king and queen together, it makes me think that maybe that there's another couple that you're working with or going to be spending time with. Uh, perhaps it's a child and their spouse, but uh, there's this very um, down-to-earth folks that you're going to be with. And so the Queen of Pentacles is also resourceful. She's able to turn a flea market find into something beautiful. She's very invested in, in beautifying the home. And again, enjoying the comforts of nature, the peacefulness, the serenity of nature, and her routines. The pentacle approach is um, common sense, pragmatic, and planning. So thinking about things, making a plan, probably, you know, if you were making travel or vacation plans, she would be online checking out all of the uh, pricing and getting everything tied down and probably typing it up in a Word document to email to everyone who's going on the trip. So here's this big blast of common sense, practical energy for you and the possibility that you're, you're going to be spending some time with some practical people, people who are very down to earth. And, you know, maybe it's a uh, people coming over and you're doing something fun or playing, uh, I don't know, something in the, playing a game in the yard, I'm not sure. But, you know, here's this um, connection to beauty and to being very capable very able in taking care of the many facets of life. So now let's choose guidance. Ooh. So we have the high priestess, Major Arcana. And the high priestess sits here with the book of knowledge on her lap. And it's, it's again, it's another sense of um, knowing thyself digging deep, diving deep in your own subconscious, in your own well. And there's a lot of information there. There are a lot of things that we keep below the surface. And sometimes it's our talents. Sometimes it's our special skills that we really don't share. But the high priestess would tell you to pay attention to your intuition, the messages, the dreams that you can remember and hopefully can write down and to see the signs all out there and maybe bringing them in closer to you. The High Priestess is about being still and finding the stillness within your life. So there's a sense for you to, if you have a little secret space in your home or a little private time, your own little altar that you can sit at and you could pray or you could meditate again or you could journal or reflect. But it's a, it's a matter of trusting your intuition, trusting your instincts for the week. And then we have another powerful card, the Magician, Major Arcana. And the Magician here, he's like the conduit of ideas, the universe inspiring, and then trickling down here to the heart and soul of the Magician. So the Magician has all the tools at his disposal and at a time in our life, we have mastery. We gain skill. We, have, we, we learn to have more experience. And so this is a matter of what is it that you're hoping to do? 
what's the passion in your life or the excitement and go out there and create it. Think of the plan. And here's the, the pentacle energy can help you step it out and make that plan. And, and to be the magician in, in your own life, it's about using all of these elements to help you succeed, to help you create. So you may have new things on the horizon that you're hoping to bring forth. And so maybe you're in the stages of planning them, of getting them going, but there is the opportunity for a new beginning and for you to be able to create the magic in your life. So now let's choose two cards for possible outcomes. So we have the Six of Wands, and the Six of Wands is a great card because this is a card of victory. It's a card of success. It's about earning your reward. You've worked hard, you've shown leadership, you have done everything behind the scenes in order to have this moment. And this moment is riding your horse, people noticing you, you have your celebratory wreath, not only here but on your head, and you could be inspiring others to follow your lead. You could have achieved a small goal, maybe a bigger goal. Maybe you're moving along on the path of the magician and you're, you're setting out. But this is a card of being recognized for your efforts. If this relates to work for some of you, then this could be a nice email from your boss, a compliment from your teammate, um, a bonus, a, uh, some benefit to you, some recognition for you. But there's definitely a sense of achieving a small goal, or maybe it's a larger goal that you've been working on for some time. And behind the scene, you've had some discipline and you have um, been able to handle adversity in order to reach you know, the victory line. And then we have the Five of Wands. And Wands, we have uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And this is about either healthy competition or you have folks who are probably not working well together. There's discord or disharmony. And it could relate to egos battling for, you know, the position within the group. There could be too many people talking at the same time and nobody's listening. So it's a matter of, looks a little chaotic. And so these are things, these are like the daily annoyances that we have where the group isn't gelling, it's not working together. And so maybe someone has to say something and you have to hit the reset button or you have to come up with some other strategies to be able to get you all to work in harmony. Because here is the potential for arguments, conflict, or simply, uh, family or, or relationship or work relationship not coming together, not working well together. So very interesting here with um, the high priestess and the magician of this inner, inner knowledge and paying credence to it, really uh, understanding yourself and that it's going to free you in order to create new paths, new, new cycles, new beginnings that are going to fulfill you. So now let's choose an oracle card for meditation or practice area for the week. Hope is the conduit for miracles. A beautiful thought and hope is essential for all parts of our life is to not lose hope. You know, hope is freeing because it, uh, you know, it, it keeps the light in your heart. So I think that that's a beautiful sentiment for the week. Now let's choose an oracle card for spirit or emotional self. Seek. The power of spirit exists in all things. Everything is made of energy and every single thing in your physical world contains a fragment of spirit. 
including you. We are all one with spirit and always will be connected to one another. So we can see this hand in the glowing light. Interesting illustration. And to me, seek is to really reflect and to honor your own beliefs, your own thoughts, your the messages that you receive from the universe, from divine source, from spirit, which is uh, pay attention to them. They, they're there for a reason. They're coming to you for a reason. And finally, I'm going to choose an oracle for love, and we'll see what's happening with love. Discernment. You are developing the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. So that's, again, discernment comes from self-awareness. It also comes from experience and putting yourself in the position to be able to do so. But the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. You have to be open and ready to feel and to hear and to see the truth. And to discern, you know, it's a powerful, powerful skill. Sometimes in life it's easier just to let go and to not dig deep because when we dig deep, we may be uncomfortable. But from that discomfort, that's how we grow. This is what I have for you for the week, and I hope that you found something helpful here with this reading. I hope you have a great week. If you enjoy this reading, subscribe, like, share, or comment, and join me next week for another reading.